Good afternoon, Bob. Good afternoon. Praise God for today, uh, a wonderful Sunday again. Okay. Amen. Praise God. Okay. And I, I saw admire Pastor Frank, but me when I prepare a message, oh, it's really, really big time. Last night I slept around like, like almost one o'clock. <laughs> and then uh, you didn't preach. yet the mess is not yet finished <laughs> and, uh, and and I started it's not started but I started since the morning of Saturday already I started will be bad but uh, still wow it's amazing because we cannot never expose so you know all the word of God where's a PowerPoint something happened okay the night man. Okay, so the same thing happened. Then you close all everything out and you open again. Something happened already. Okay. Never mind. You go chapter 11, verse 6. I do not know something is happening. But I hope all of us have Bible, okay? Yes. Yeah, because we have nothing to preach uh, without the Bible. The Bible said in Hebrew chapter 11, verse 6, tonight, to, uh, this afternoon, I would like to talk about the topic between faith and favor on Nehemiah chapter 2. Faith and favor. Hebrew chapter 11, verse 6, that was my memory verses this morning. Uh, Revelation Hebrews here, 11 verse 6. Let's all stand together and let's read together. Have a long sau, cầu số. Đoạn 11, cầu số 6. Okay, amen. Amen. Amen, there you go. So it will be clearer. <coughs> let's read together Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. Ready? Begin. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Gracious and mighty Father, thank you, dear Lord, for this um, afternoon. Thank you, dear Lord, that you gather us here. And help us, Father, diligent seek the Lord through your word. Seek the Lord to, to, through the truth that we have and Lord you are the rewarder of anyone who seek you Lord thank you Father Lord help us Father to seek you and help us Father to understand the message with faith faith and favor from God uh, in the book of Nehemiah in chapter 2 thank you Lord in Jesus name we pray Amen <coughs> so now uh, in, in this in chapter one, we, we uh, I give a little bit context that the uh, Nehemiah was a cupbearer in Susan Kingdom and in Susan Palace, and then uh, the uh, he heard the news from his brother that came from Jerusalem, and then the wall being being destroyed, and then the. Uh, People over there being afflicted. That's why he's really sorrow in heart and he pray, 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 pray. Okay? And uh, chapter 1 is about the prayer, and we can see also over there the, the four aspects of Nehemiah prayers in last meeting. Today we continue. And the last one is Nehemiah waited. After he prayed, he waited for four months before his turn to, be, uh, to meet the king. And in first one, the Bible said, uh, that uh, and it came to pass in the month of Nisan that four months of praying and twenty years twentieth year of Texas as the king that wine was uh, before him that I took up the wine so uh, the cupbearers is possible that they will uh, interchange they exchange their works every four months and then uh, I gave it unto the king now. Had not been before time sad in his present. Now, the 
king noted at it and asked him what was the reason. The king perceived that this man is not sick. So Nehemiah afraid. Why? Because the king was doubting maybe Nehemiah has a treachery or a remorse of sin. Because being a cupbearer in uh, for the king is a privilege in Persia. Therefore, the officer should not be be sad. The changing of countenance is a big question mark for the king. Not only with the king, but the queen sit nearby. Why you are sad? You know, all all the officers are looking at him. All all a lot of people are admiring his position, the position that being trusted by the king. Why you are sad? Being sad is something that very unusual and abnormal. That's why if Nehemiah did not or do not answer well the questions of the doubt, he may you know he may be bring to death. Because the eyes of all the palace was upon him, waiting for his answer. Now, how did the Lord bring him to the situation like this? His answer may bring him to death. Remember Esther, King Esther, Queen Queen, sorry, <laughs> Queen Esther. God brought her to the point that if he approached the king, if the king do not give the scepter to her. She will die, right. and not only that. There are many cases. Abraham, the test because you know. Sometime in our lives, God answer comes with a situation that we cannot imagine, and He put us to the brim of death and show us how power He is. My wife, she still remember when God called her. She she always pray, Lord, use me, use me to in the ministry. She always pray like that before when she was a Bible school student. And when God used her and brought her to Vietnam, she said all of the towels that she towel that she used are wet, crying, the yak the yak are crying from all the they using the boat to cross to Manila. Right all the times, and she never dream about having a, a for a Vietnamese foreigner's husband and keep on fighting. <laughs> you know, and Mummy Me told me that she never thinking about Vietnam. She always think, she was thought about Europe before. But why Lord she brought in Vietnam? You know, God answered with us with a surprise, and He put us to the cliff. We stand on the cliff here. We have nothing to do. Go back, death. Go forward, death. Right, death. Left, death. The only thing we can do is pray. So Nehemiah says in verse four that so I pray to the God of heaven. When nothing can do, the prayer will work. So Nehemiah told the king that the city, uh, the place of my father Sebuker, okay, in verse two, I think. Uh, why is it thy countenance sad, being thou hast not sick? This is nothing else but sorrow of heart. You are doing something wrong. Then I was very sore afraid. He said so, and then he said, I said unto the king, Let the king live forever. Why should not my countenance be sad when the city, the place of my father's sepulchres, lieth waste, and the gates thereof are consumed with fire? That is the reason he gave him. <clears throat> Now, why Nehemiah was so concerned about his father's sepulcher? In chapter one, actually, the thing he's concerned was about the people, the remnant that being afflicted, and the wall that being cast down. He never mentions about the father's sepulcher. He sorrows because of the people afflicted. Now he said to the king that. He sorrow because of his father's sepulchre is like waste, and the gates being consumed with fire. So, what was that? Why is that answer like that? 
Now, before the presence of the king, he, he only mentions uh, about Jerusalem. There's maybe two possible reasons for Nehemiah's answer. First, he, if he told the king his concern was about the remnant of Israel, maybe all the officers in the palace will doubt about his treachery or rebellion against the king. Second, he told the king concerning about his father's sepulchre means that he loved his father, his ancestors. He knows his positions, he humbled himself, he knows that even he is a cupbearer, is he's never be a Persian. He just an Israelite. Because of this, the king has given him a favor. God gave Nehemiah a wise answer before the king. And God turned his uh, the heart of the king to a favor to Nehemiah. That's how marvelous is the work of the Lord. We just be faithful to him and he will give us favor, deliver us out of the danger. Remember Joseph in the prison. He cannot do anything. He cannot blame the 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 one the cupbearer of the king and the who's that? The bachelor, all right? The, the one who make the bread, bring the bread to the king, the baker. baker. He cannot blame that two person. The only thing he can do in prison is pray. Daniel's in the lion's den. The only thing he can do is pray. He cannot cry for help, he can go out. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego in front of the king. In the situation, if you reject to the battle, you will put into fire. The only thing he can, they can do is pray. God really put them into the point of life and death, and God miraculous, miraculously delivered them out of danger. So when we enter into danger for righteousness' sake, remember the word of the Lord Jesus in Matthew chapter ten verse, uh, chapter five verse ten. Blessed are they which are persecuted for the righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That is the comfort of our Christian life, right? Next, sincerity brought favor. Nehemiah was a cupbearer, high positions, trusted positions, yet he did not forget his origin, his people. The, out, the His attitude reminds us about us. Even we Christians, there are many Christians are rich, very rich, they have high positions, have houses here and houses there, a lot, you know, respected by all the peoples, uh, political leaders. Even we are important in this world, yet we are not belong to this world. And this world will never be our home. We are just pilgrim on earth. Heaven is our true home. It is the city, the founder and the builder is God. Nehemiah's answer pleased the Lord and he granted his request. Then the king said unto me, For what thou make request? The king asked. Asked him, Okay, for, the, for what thou make a request? What, in other words, what do you want me to do? What is your request now? Yeah. Nehemiah was not surprised with the questions of the king since he has already the answer before the king asked. So he said, If it please the king, and if thy servant have found favor in thy sight, that thou wouldest send me unto Judah, unto the city of my father's sepulchres, that I may build it. So our next point, number three, specific broad trust. When somebody asks uh, you something like many Christians nowadays ask for money. Lord, give me my money. Give me money. I need money uh, because of this. But when God asks them, what will you do with the money? <coughs> okay. Example. If God <coughs> give you two billion Vietnam dollars today, what will you do, Joel? <coughs> I don't know. He will not give you for sure. Because you do not know what to do with the money. Okay, let's say, Chơi ru, nếu Chúa cho con 2 tỷ ngày hôm nay, con sẽ làm gì? 
No. Don't know what to do. See? How can God will give you money if you do not know what to do? Okay. Let's say, see, uh, Victoria. Victoria. I hope you will win. Nếu chú cho con 2 tỷ của bạn. Con mua nhà, mua nhà cho ai? Cho con với mẹ. Vậy chú cho mẹ con, hỏi cho con. Đúng rồi. Đó, cho mua nhà, cho mẹ mua nhà, cho mẹ hỏi cho con. Ok, thì con cũng chưa có tiền luôn. 2 tỷ trong này không ai có tiền hết. Con có 2 tỷ không ạ? <laughs> oh, that's so awesome. See, many Christians nowadays we are asking for money, but in reality, when God asks you, what will you do with the money? Then only few can answer him immediately. Most of the time, we started to pray, oh, Lord, give me money. And God said, How much do you need? Okay? How much do you need? If really God asks so, we will start to think, Lord, I need my monthly payment around 10 million. Oh Lord, no, 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 maybe not enough. Maybe a plus 5 million for traveling. Yeah, 15 million. Oh, not enough. And then I need to support my daughters and my kids in studying. So 30 million more. And then uh, I need to give the time and support more missionary. And then 20 million more. And then we keep on thinking, we keep on adding, adding, adding. That's reality in our lives. You know, Nehemiah knew what he really wants and he gave the answer immediately to the king. He's not greedy for those money. He's really prayed for that before. So, he said that his, his desire is very clear. He wants to go to Judah. Okay? Very clear. So, Nehemiah knew really what he wants by what? By he know what time, how long will it take. The king asked him, and the queen also sit by, how long shall that journey be? If Nehemiah just started to think now, you know, Nehemiah never been to Jerusalem. He just heard the news only. So, he may think, maybe it's so big, so vast, they starting to calculate. The king and the queen is waiting. You cannot start to calculate. You in front of the king already. So Nehemiah set him a times immediately. So before Nehemiah came, Nehemiah has a specific prayer to God. And when the time comes, he answer immediately what he needs. So in his prayer. Nehemiah also asked God even for more favor. With faith, we believe that God would answer him. That was why Nehemiah was not hesitating to ask the king there. Moreover, I said unto the king, if it please the king, let the lester be given to the governors beyond the river that they may convey me over till I come into Judah. See? So, the verse, more, 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 more. And the letter unto Asaph, the keeper of the king's forest, that he may give me timber to make beams for the gates of the palace, which pertained to the house and for the walls of the cities and for the house that I should enter into and the kings granted me according to the good hands of the God of God give it to me. Nehemiah really a stout hearted man. What is stout? Brave. Back it, why brave? Now Nehemiah is just a was just a slave. He was too captive. And the slave has no right. You understand? Một người nô lệ như Nehemiah thì không có cái quyền gì hết. No right. Mà tướng tượng đi, ông đứng trước vị vua. He stand before the king and ask the king to allow him to go back to his country. It's a great favor already. But yet, he did not stop it. He asked the king, Lord, uh, king, 
May you please protect me. Send somebody. Go with me and protect me. And give me the provision, the wood, the timber from the king forest. From the king forest. That the king has, is, the wood is very good. He has that wood for him to build the gate. Wow. Imagine that. The slave, I let you go, it's a privilege already. Now you ask me to protect you and send a letter for my fight for the ASAP that, that will let you use the, the my wood, my treasure. Imagine that. Wow. You know, the king may got angry. It this one revived, you know. Reminded me is one famous verse in the Bible. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Right. Psalm 23 verse 5. God always surprises people by strange and amazing ways. God provided Israel's need when they left Egypt by what? Who remember? When God used Moses to bring Israel out of Egypt, he, they did not go out with empty pocket, with poor, with what? With the gold and silvers of the Egyptians. Right. Is that amazing? You are just slave, stranger here, and when you go out, you know, they get all the money out, and they're willing to give. That's how wonderful our God is. God provided Elijah by what? By the greed and graven. Wow, and here, it is supposed that Israel, Israel, Israelite should be the one who support the wood. The king would say, you go, you work for your, your, your country, your, your ancestor, your people. Let your people protect you. Let your people give the wood. Why you ask the stranger king? It's supposed that Israelite is the one who gives to the world. But God used the king. See that? But the king was the one who supported him. Not only provisions, but also protection. According to the commentary, from uh, the, the Susa to Jerusalem is approximately 900 miles. That is 1,448 kilometers. How far is it? From here to Hanoi is only around 1,300 kilometers. But in old time, they walked by horse from here to Hanoi. Dingo. Imagine it takes approximately three months. Imagine if from here to Hanoi, I will give you a motorbike. Can you drive? <laughs> it's really far. <laughs> How much money am I? I just walk. And with the woods with him, the rest is wood. He is just a piece of cake for the thief to attack the robbers, to attack all the way along. It's not like this. We just want no problem. In the old time, you pass a lot of territories. And he's alone. No soldier, no army with him and break the wood with Israelites, no armed. It's very easy to attack. But it was the king who gave the soldiers to go with him. Imagine that. He not only bring timber, wood, but the food, the, the, the thing was with him. Now, the king's verse 9. Now it came to pass, the governor beyond the river and gave them the king's letter. The king had sent captains of armies and horsemen with me. See that? Wow! Such an amazing! Have you ever enjoyed the protection of the unbeliever police when you travel to another country? Have you ever experienced some unbelievers, an unknown person that's come and help you in the time of need? Yes, it is the Lord's work and it's marvelous in our eyes. There are times in our lives that other Christians didn't help us. Oh no. There are other times that Christians didn't help us, but the one who helped us was unbeliever friends. And it is happening, and I know many of us experienced that. But let us not forget, it was not the unbeliever friends or other peoples, but it is God who used them. 
It is the king granted me according to the good hand of my God upon me. Nehemiah 2 8. It was the hand of God that walked upon every unbeliever king or friends who have us. Let us not depend on him, them, but depend on God. We may thank you for them, appreciate them, and we should do, but we have to know it was God who touches their heart to help us. And be not also so sad when all the Christians don't help us. It was happened to Nehemiah, even to Ezra, Jerubabel, and when King Cyrus the Great ordered the commandments and allowed all the Israel to come back, but only few of them come back. Many of Christians nowadays being attracted to the glory of the world and forgot their purpose, forgot their mission. It's happening all the times, everywhere, in every church. So therefore, let us not be sad because of them. Let us focus on God and the mission that God has called us to do. And God will always have miraculously provide for our need. Amen? Amen. 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 And next, the shrug of the enemy. Shrug of. Put unto important the enemies. Look at this. When Sanballat and the Horonite and the Tobia the servants, the Amorites, heard of it, it grieved them exceedingly that there was come a man to seek the welfare of the children of Israel. In every works of the Lord, there is always hindrances. When Jerubbabel left the first uh, return to build the temple, the animals were displeased and stopped them and said something bad thing about them. So the king told him to stop. And then after years later, they continued to go back again. And then what happened? And then uh, they, 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 the enemies want to stop them again and send a letter to the king again. And the king found, search the scroll. And then what happened? The king found the old scroll of Darius, and the king reversed. The king said, okay, enemies, do not touch them. Let them do the work of the Lord. See that? When over here, when we do the work of the Lord, the enemies grieve. But what was the response of Nehemiah? Ignore. From verse 11 to up to the end over there. He never mentions about them. But so totally ignore them. He didn't mention anything at all. He simply ignore. Christians, let, let us not take time to deal with unbelievers who don't understand and never understand the word of God. We, all, we also can see the two differences in two sides of the battle. The enemy was in trouble. Okay? When they hear there was a man. When there came a man to seek the warfare. When they hear just a man, they do not know what's that man. Who is that man? It's not popular. It's just a man. When they hear they are already in trouble, in chaos, because of an unknown. They worry, they are angry, and they grieve exceedingly. But in another side, Nehemiah was too tall in peace, too tall ignore them, as if the enemies didn't exist. If we do Jesus' work, when the darkness brings politics, we will be when we do Jesus' work, the old darkness principality will be shaken. You may not know that. But if Satan knows there is a man coming to the beach looking for souls to share the gospel, I tell you, the darkness principalities are shaken. It's shaken. So, what do we do with that darkness principality? Nothing. It's up to you. Jesus said, Peace I live with you, my peace I give you, not as the world given, I give you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither be afraid. Jesus said in John 14, 27. Enemy, it's okay. 
my parents are believers. And they said to me many things discouraging about serving the Lord, you know, why you dance for here and there, why you don't have a certain place, why you you have a good work, you, why you don't you teach English in the, in the school, why you have a good salary, why did you, did you stop? They have a lot of things saying, but you know, I just put, you know, trong tiếng Việt á, có câu là, đóng cái kệ để im đó, cái gì cứ kệ, Kai, kai. <laughs> what is that in English? <laughs> because the word ignore in Vietnamese is the same with the cabinet. It's like the same with the cabinet. Okay. Okay. Uh, you same me is same spelling. Okay. Uh, same spelling, but it's only a noun and a adjective. How do you use it only? Okay. So uh, I said when the problem comes. You make the cabinet put there, and you look at guy, ah guy, ignore, ignore, <laughs> never mind, never mind. I believe, teacher, my brother also the same. When we have unbelievers, brothers and sisters, they always say things about us. There will be in troubles, but we will be in peace. My calling is to do the work of evangelist. Wheresoever I have preached the gospel and the people reject it, then I will move to another place. As long as there's still places the gospel not yet being preached, then I will still I still go. And next Nehemiah being uh, uh, escorted by the armies of the king and with on the deeper deeper woods. That bring with him travel far, very far distances. And then when he arrived, I was there three days. So I came to Israel and I was there three days. Huh? What did he do in three days? Why? He's a waste of time. Why did he start the work immediately? Though, you know, the same time is so limited. You know, there was questions that may appear to our eyes. But I believe he has no strength to start the work immediately. Before he came to Jerusalem, Jerusalem he's only heard about it. But when he come, he see what he saw is so terrible. And it really gives sorrow and burdens to his heart. So much sorrow. That not to work, but first bow down to pray. Three days to bow down to pray for a man of God to regain his strength. Now, after three days, it was time for work. Nehemiah started his work by praying walk. Verse 12. And I arose in the night, and I and some few men with me near us stood. I any man I told I any man that what my God had put in my heart to do in Jerusalem, neither was there any beast with me save the beast that I rode upon. I went out by night by the gates of the valley, even before the dragon wells and to the dark port, and viewed the walls of Jerusalem which was broken down, and the gates thereof was consumed with fire. Then I went on the gates of the fountain and to the king's pool, and there was no place for the beast that was under me to pass. Then when I up the, uh, then when I up in the night by the brook and viewed the wall and turned back and entered to the gate of the and so returned. He go around, around to what? To pray. He chose to walk by night. Maybe he doesn't want to meet some disturbance. He chose to walk alone rather than by many people. He wants to be alone in prayer. He is praying, walking. Nehemiah didn't, didn't tell anything to other men about what God has put in his heart. God directed Nehemiah's heart while he was walking, looking at the walls, gate to gate, place to place. And I remember my pastor Jerry Naple. Uh, but the pastor that uh, you, you know right, ma'am? Pastor Jerry Naple. 
No. Uh, he wasn't here. Ah, wasn't here this morning. Okay. My pastor in Bethany, I was sending pastor. Okay, this is a mission judge. The modern judge is in Bethany, my pastor there. When I was there, pastor up there, you know, during at night time after his teaching, something, he always go up, go around, room by room, floor by floor, and go up, go up, and then uh, I asked, why must don't you go around? Go, why don't you take the elevator? You know, he was walking while praying. And while he walking praying, <laughs> but then he's 69 years, but yet the building is forever under construction. <laughs> because of his prayer walking. <laughs> when he pray, Lord, it's so small, it's a younger space here. Let's destroy and build more. And then after building that one, more. And then see another one, build up again. And just keep on, keep on building, building, and building up. Prayer and walking. We always lack of, you know, uh, uh, accommodations during the World Mission Conference this time. And full of room of falls, and especially the car parking. Cash and carry don't like us anymore. We have to keep all the space. <laughs> Buy very little, keep the car there all day, and all other places. So we skip on praying. No person is praying for the place that to buy to keep the cars, like that. And we as have to learn from Nehemiah, from our pastor. When you make a plan of soul winnings plan, we should not only just, we, of course we pray, but not only we just stay in place and write the plan how to soul winning. You go out to the place you really want, the mission field, and then you see the people and pray to God, pray for all the people that pass by. Okay, pray for all the people that pass by. That I usually always do. We go on the beach, all the people pass by, pass by, always pray, Lord, which one's the one that you lead me to, Lord? May you save some of them from here. Even one of them, Lord, find me the person that... You know, it's really different when you pray here and you pray in the field. So let us learn from this. Pray with walking. Okay? After that, he shifts the hearts of people to God. And the ruler knew not where I went, and neither I yet told any man the Jews, nor priests, nor the nobles, the rulers, the rest that did the work. Then I said to them, Now, after God spoke to him and planned this time, he bring that plan to the people. And how? And he said, Ye see the distress that we are in, how Jerusalem lies waste, and the gates thereof are burnt with fire. Come! Let us build up the wall in Jerusalem that we no more a reproach. And I told them the hand of my God was good upon me. And he told them the story how the God used the kings. Oh, usually how many? Because if I witness this one, is six points. Oh no, seven points. Only two more. Amen, yeah, try to finish it. Yes. After surveying the wall, Nehemiah started to convict people to work. First, he let them see what happened in Jerusalem. The wall was broken down, the bird gates, affliction of the people. And then second, he gave them the importance of rebuilding of the gate, that we be no more reproach. Third, he gave a testimony how the Lord had used him to start, uh, to start from starting point up to that time. He tell them what God has done to him. And the people were touched by the message and they strengthened themselves for the work. And they said, let us rise up and build. So they strengthened their hand for the work. You can see that if you are a leader, then you have to let people some situation, let them see the need. Let just not give them words and report, but brings and show them the reality. If you are so winners, bring them to the place of the people and show them how hopeless the people are. And that they will see 
and what they see will affect their heart. At least at the point of prayer. Second, show them the futures of these unbelievers, internal health by Bible verses, and then tell them the personal personal testimony how the Lord has found you, saved you from the dungeon of, of the world that God, the Lord has saved you. Okay. The last, Amen. The last point: scrap of the enemies, and then in verse nineteen. But San Palas and the Horonites and Tobias, the servant the Amorites and the Asian Arabian heard it, they laughed to the scorn and despised us and said, What is this thing that you do? Will you rebel against the king? They laughed. Over here we saw the contradiction. The first time they heard about the man who gave the wall, they grieved. They paid for exceedingly grief. The second time, they laughed. <coughs> it's showing that the fake of their laughing, deep inside they are painful, their sorrow, their worries because of us. Their laugh is just fake. The enemy is truly hurt when they see the Lord's work began. But they will not show their sorrows, lest we will be encouraged. But they will laugh to discourage us, to mock us. They are hiding the fact that we can't do anything to hinder the work of the Lord. And they are hiding their weakness and helpless. Christians, if you are on the right track, some people are mocking at you. It is not because you are doing wrong. It's not because you cannot do it. But it's not because, but because you are doing the right things. Let us focus on God's calling. What he has called you to do, do it because he is with you. We will get sidetracked if we listen to other people. Look at the way of Nehemiah answered them. The God of heaven will prosper us. Therefore, we, his servants, will arise and build. But they have no motion, no right, no mem memorial in Jerusalem. This answer clearly shows the hearts of Nehemiah. It is God of heaven who called him to do. And he and the workers need only God to help them. They, others, have no potions, no right, no memorial. No memorial. He rejected them immediately. The enemy is afraid. The enemy is trying to laugh. They grieve inside. You know it. They just pretend. But we don't care. Scrap them up. No, you don't have any motion here. In conclusion, what is faith in favor? We should have the scrutiny of the heart. Before God really used us, He tested us. He put us to the point that we may cry. We may experience pain. Is testing. Trusting him is testing of the heart. And then, next, if we sincere, truly with what we believe and what we pray for, God will give us favor from other people. Ooh. Second point, sincerity. And next, when we pray, we have to specific in our prayer because specific will brought trust. No one will just no one will trust you if your plan is not specific. You cannot give the proposal to the, the boss and your plan is proposal is not specific. Specific bring trust. And next, the stout hearted man's request. When we pray, be brave. When we come to application, be brave. Because we already pray. And now we go. Request the king for protection and provision. Let us don't be afraid. Number five, shrug off the enemies. Don't care about it. Put it into it. Unimportant. Ignore them. Ignore the enemies. Ignore others, unbelievers, saying against because you know what are you doing? 
Next, when you see the ministry, sorrows to pray. God really loves the prayers from the heart, not the prayer from the mouth. Right. And a sorrowful heart is a thing that God is looking for. Prayer is the strongest to comfort us, to com strongest comfort to us. In prayer, we get God's instruction and direction. Next, shift the heart to the people. Means you transfer what God has put you to, you, to your heart to the people. We are not cannot do it alone. The company, the, the Christians are together with us, we share to them our heart. Heart to heart speaking. Because without that one, we may not understand each other. We need to sit down with each other, heart to heart speaking. What God has put into my heart, impressed to my heart. And God, God has impressed to your heart. We share. And we work together. Next, shift. Uh, next, the last, the seventh point. Scrap the enemies. Reject the enemies. Because they have no power with us. Don't care. When we have our friends, our workers already, we and uh, I and we, our Israelites, who work us to be with us, we will work. Only us. I don't care about you. You have no portion, no right. So I hope to Nehemiah chapter 2, we can have a strong faith that we will have a favor from God, that He used all the peoples, whosoever, to use us and prosper us in the ministry that God has given to us. Let's pray. Gracious and mighty Father, thank you, dear Lord, for this wonderful afternoon that we have. Thank you, dear Lord, for your reminder to Nehemiah. Really, Lord, this is a great example for us that we need to uh, pray to you, Father, and sincere to you in everything that we do. And Lord, when we pray to you, we need to be brave, stout-hearted, to put it into reality, dear Lord. Asking for the request from you. Lord, thank you, Father, for this reminder. There's many, many hindrances, many enemies in our enemies. This can be our pride, can be our families, can be the monies, can be unbeliever friends, can, can be a misunderstanding, can be all the dilemmas that, God, that, that has come all the ways. But Lord, help us, Father, to put all things sort of old prayer. And Lord, I know this ministry needs you. This ministry of the school training the young children in a too godly way is really, really hard, specific, especially in the restricted nation. We pray, Father, you will be always be with each one of the teachers and staff over here that we will bring out the gospel to the students. That the seed that we saw in their hearts will not return to them Thank you, Father, so much, Lord. May you help and guide us, and may you submit, use our heart to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Okay. This is summary here, Bala. How about the offering? Ah, okay, okay. Okay. So, praise God for His Word.